Movie sword training course tip one. How to choose your practice two-handed longsword. That's what we'll answer in today's video. Hi, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. We help actors, stunt performers, filmmakers, and content creators learn professional stunt training for use in film, TV, and live action entertainment. Now, before we get underway, if you're interested in adding two-handed longsword training to your acting or stunt performer skill set, check out our highly popular online master course at MovieSwordFighting.com. You can learn sword attacking angles, sword counterattacks, sword stunt reactions, even cinematic sword draws, how to market your career, and more. Go to MovieSwordFighting.com for more information, or click on the link below this video. Okay, so we get a lot of questions about movie sword fight training techniques and tips. So we're gonna share a few things with you. Now I'm actually an experienced stunt coordinator turned director. This is something I plan to do from the beginning of my career, up to and including even attending and graduating film school as a director. Now along my journey, I learned that being a stunt coordinator made me a better director, as well as being a director made me a better stunt coordinator. So how this benefits you is I can share with you insights and experience from both sides of the camera as well as through all stages of production. When we thought about what would benefit you the most, we decided to put together this uh, free six-part video course that shows you the basics of two-handed longsword. So you can use it to put together your own choreography for your own reel, you know, for auditions, and even your own content. For actual performances and highly competitive auditions, you need more training like what we offer in our movie sword fighting master course. Why does this work? Because for self-tapes, sword auditions, and performances, you just have to look like you know how to use a sword. The reality is if you're not the lead or featured fighter, you're gonna launch anywhere from zero to two strikes and you're gonna get killed. Watch this clip from the series, The Witcher, to see more. Now, how many sword strikes did each guy get to throw in that action sequence? Exactly. So in this video, we're gonna cover the two-handed longsword training equipment and gear that you need to start your training. Now, we place a premium on safety. So the first thing we start out with is our protective gear. And there's two items that you must get. And one is some type of eye protection and one that offers eye protection 360 degrees, not just a pair of sunglasses that don't provide any protection to the side of your eyes. The second thing is, uh, it's kind of beaten up, you have a protective cuff, and this is something that actually goes here to protect your uh, crotch area. This is for both guys and ladies. No one enjoys getting hit in the crotch with, with a weapon of any type. So the basic is this, and I, we use this because we use more um, PVC pipe and other things when we're doing starting movie training. Uh, yet if you're going to do HEMA or SCA, then you're definitely going to need a fencing mask of some type. And these aren't cheap, right? So uh, if you're gonna do HEMA, SCA or something, and they'll even tell you this, uh, you're gonna need some type of fencing mask. With the way that we do it though, literally just these two are fine. Just the uh, protective eye goggles and some sort of uh, groin protection. And that's the, the safety equipment that you need. All right, the next thing to get, second thing to get is your actual training sword. So we're gonna share with you some options because everyone doesn't have a whole lot of money to go out and buy some expensive $200 sword or a hundred dollar sword so here are some some good options the first one which a lot of people like to do are plastic swords because they're realistic the uh, good ones simulate the weight of a two-handed long sword and this is actually made of plastic if you can see it right black plastic this is another type of two-handed long sword again made of plastic you see how thick it is how wide it is so it's perfect for uh for training right so these are two. You also can use wooden swords. And here's a couple of wooden swords. These are old, you know, wooden style, uh, wooden sword with or without the, uh, the hand guard on it. Here's another one. This is a Shanai. It's actually made of bamboo. 
another popular uh, type of uh, wooden training sword, right? Though more people tend to like this one more because it feels more like a real weapon than this one. So these are wood though. Again, safe. I'll tell you a few more. Now there are also foam swords as well. Pricier than you would think. They're, they're not cheap. Uh, and people use them when they're playing LARP and other things. They're great for training, right? So they have enough weight to it where you can get some practice with it. And once again, with a foam sword, you can just wear the goggles and the protective cup. All right, some other ones. Here we go. You wouldn't think of this. This is actually what we like to start people with, pieces of PVC, right? This is PVC pipe. And why this is so great is you're gonna see in a moment, it's easier for people starting out to see it as it's moving, to follow it with your eye, as opposed to, you know, if you have something like this. See, this is, a, this is an aluminum sword. You see, so for a beginner, trying to track this is much more challenging than keeping track of this. And so because it's so light in color, it, it, it catches your eye and it helps you develop your reflexes. So uh, this is why we recommend, you know, everyone starting out with a piece of PVC. They're also very inexpensive. You get an eight foot length of PVC for like, you know, three or four dollars. And that's, you know, at least two swords, right? So if you have a partner, you know, like four bucks, three or four bucks, you got a sword for each of you, right? Now, these, the sides, the PVC, depending on where you are in the world, if you don't have PVC, you grab a piece of bamboo, right? You could also grab, you know, a tree branch. It could be a broom or mop handle. And all you do is just break it down to the size of a, um, of a two-handed longsword, and that's how you can practice. So you don't have to go and save up your money and buy something if you have a, a paint extender, a broom, <laughs> an old broom, an old mop, you know, tree branches outside or something. All you need is something like that that uh, you can uh, cut down or break into the length of an actual uh, two-handed longsword. Now, something else that you can use is this. It's actually a two-handled battle axe. The thing is, uh, not the real long one. That's a different, different type of weapon. Yet for a battle axe of this length, you could, the same techniques that you learn with two-handed longsword you can use with a two-handed battle axe. So if you have a character that you're going to be playing or you want to play, be a Viking character or any other character, a lot of cultures use, use axes. The same stuff that you learn with, uh, with two-handed longsword also applies with this weapon as well. So some people just like to, you know, get a plastic weapon. You could go online and find these, you know, uh, different people who sell them. And it does make a difference, you know, in when you're training with something that feels like an actual weapon as opposed to when it's PVC. Yet in the beginning, like we said, start with this, then later on, you know, you can, you can change other weapons. One of the things we don't recommend that you do is you should not start with a metal or aluminum blade. I'm gonna show you both of these. Uh, you can get one when you have a good grasp of the basics. So this is actually an aluminum sword. This, these are the type of swords you actually use on set, right? And if you notice, you can't tell, the audience wouldn't be able to tell that it's, it's aluminum. And if you see here, it's actually dull here because it's not stainless steel, so it's not sharp. And because of that, even if you hit somebody, it doesn't cut them. There's no, there's no way it can really cut them. It can still stab them though. It's still got a sharp enough point. Yet aluminum, aluminum swords uh, are good for performance because that's what you'll use on movie sets. Yet do not start training with them because they're far more dangerous to you and if you're training with a partner, dangerous to them. The other option, like we mentioned before, is stainless, dull stainless steel. This is actually an African sword from Ghana. Another two-handed sword. Remember, it doesn't matter what culture the sword is from, as long as two hands can comfortably fit on it, it's still considered to be a two-handed long sword, right? And if you notice, you know, this is the blade. This is dull, so it has not been sharpened. I have other blades, you know, from Ghana, razor sharp. I would never, I would never even want to touch it, even though this is the proper way of testing sharpness on the blade. Yet, the, uh, for a long time, this is what people use for swords. Now, they're, they use, you know, there's also wooden swords. There were, uh, now there are resin swords as well, yeah, for many years, and even still now, dull stainless steel blades are still very common, not just in, in film and TV, but also even for stage combat. Yet, this again is something else. If you notice, you see how it's moving. 
it's hard to track that, right? As compared to compared to this, where your eye just can't seem to lose it, right? So this is why we have you start with this. So do not get a upgrade and get a stainless steel or aluminum uh, sword until you have a good grasp of the basics and you've had a competent instructor assess you. There's nothing for someone to look at you and, and be able to tell that you have a good grasp of the basics. Speaking of which, check this out. Let's take a sneak peek and look inside this master course that was made by pro stunt coordinators, actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers for professional actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers, even content creators. By the way, if you're a martial artist, you're going to learn how to convert your martial arts skills into movies and TV. And the first thing you notice is that we designed our platform to be very intuitive and easy to use. Right, the moment you're in there, whether you're on your computer or your phone, you can pretty much figure out what to do very quickly. Each one of our master courses start off with an introduction and a safety briefing, so you actually get to meet your instructors. And each one, you know, they go over the, uh, their background, their qualifications, that sort of thing, as well as going over an actual safety briefing. Now, we always want you to learn as much as possible, so along with that comes with your own cheat sheet. There's also a private online social community which we're actually covered later. You actually get our email address and information to actually uh, reach us. This is the two-handed sword video breakdown. It covers swords, grips, stances, 15 attacking angles, everything to give you a, a strong, solid foundation. The two-handed sword master class. Now you notice that each, our course is broken down into units. So this is a unit, this is a unit, and each unit is broken down into a class or instructional. Each of these is an instructional. Each one's about 10 minutes long. We like to keep them about 10 minutes or bite size and not too long. Some are a bit longer because they have to be. And for the most part, they're about 10 minutes so you can actually learn more effectively. This one covers a lot of the sword counterattacks. We'll actually take a look at one here. The, um, this is a weapon shield hit four. So we'll take a look at this one. And you see everything is broken down, explained step by step, demonstrated so you know exactly how it should look you know, how it should flow. Now one of the many other cool things is that we include what we call live action video displays. They actually are clips from movies and TV shows so you actually can see you know, what the choreography can look like when it's in a movie. So we'll take a look at one here. This is a clip from the Kingdom of Heaven. And you can see how it actually all comes together. So the stuff that you're learning, you see it's different than if you're doing combat in your body because they're going to shoot it differently, they're going to edit it differently, and this helps you to really lock in your lessons. Here is a, a, uh, one of the, the most popular courses, uh, classes rather, in this course is the two-handed sword drawing and resheathing clinic, where you learn all sorts of ways of cinematically drawing the sword. You know, when you can do a cool sword draw, they're definitely going to be, you know, favoring you in the camera. So let's take a look at one of them here. We'll go with this with this one. This is the sword in the earth position. Just so you can see what it kind of looks like. And you see step by step broken down. You showed exactly what to do, how to do it over and over again. So it doesn't matter if you are a, a ranked beginner, everything is, is broken down and explained to you uh, so that you are clear on how to safely and effectively perform each of these, these movie sword sequences. This one is our monthly sharpen and polish video conference lab. Each month we do this and it's designed to actually help you with your career. Try it 48 hours risk-free. After reviewing the entire course, if you don't like what you see and it doesn't work for you, we'll refund every penny. Who else lets you go through their movie sword training and then if you're not happy after looking at all the training, gives you a complete refund. Bottom line, we're passionate about making our customers happy and keeping them that way. So well worth the investment if you're serious about learning two-handed longsword movie sword fighting. And one last caveat, if you're making your two-handed longsword out of PVC or wood, cut it so that it's about three feet to three and a half feet long. And the reason why is this simulates many uh, katanas, I'll show you, and European style longswords quite well. So here's a katana, and this is actually a three feet. That's why you could do three and a half feet as well. See how, how long it is? So it could be three and a half feet to be the exact same length. And this is a, a, a Japanese katana. This again is a sword from Ghana, Africa. 
see the same thing. So this is a little shorter than the, um, than the European longsword. Yeah, that's why this is three feet, three and a half feet would be about right there. So anywhere from three to three and a half feet is gonna be good for you to be able to start training and practicing with if you cut it to that length. Once you have your movie sword fighting, training equipment and gear, plus your practice movie sword, you're ready to start training. So in our next video, we're gonna share with you the two-handed long sword, 12 most used guards and stances used in film and TV. Make sure you like this video and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the second of our six part free movie sword training courses. Also, make sure you sign up for our Pro Stunt Tips email newsletter to get movie sword fight training stunt tips in your inbox. Lastly, if you like more information on our highly popular two-handed longsword master course, go to moviesswordfighting.com or click on the link below this video. Again, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. Don't miss our next video where we share with you another movie sword fighting tip. See you next video.